Hi, I'm Luke Arthur Wells, and this is five things I learned when putting up an indoor plant wall. So recently Dobby's Garden Centre launched a plant wall which can work indoors or outdoors and as soon as I saw it I knew that I needed to use it in the new house in the living room. Here's five things that I think you might want to know if you're planning on putting one up in your home too. So a couple of weeks ago I popped along to one of Dobby's stores and picked up one of their Wonderwall starter kits. In the box you get three planters to start with. Um, mine are all up on the wall but they actually look like this. So each row has three pots which basically means you can put three plants in. It also comes with two battens which are perfectly cut to size. If you want to extend the plant wall then you can just go to your local hardware store and find exactly the same size piece of wood and cut them to size. So in the box you also get a pack filled with all the bits and pieces that you need to put the wall up. It has some of these little filter clips which go inside the pot. So basically once these are clipped in it allows you to water the wall from the top and it should filter all the way through. So you only need to water just the top row and don't have to water every single individual plant. Also in the pack you get some detailed instructions um, which tell you exactly step by step with pictures of how to put it all up and on the front it tells you the kinds of different plants that you can use. So once you've decided on the space that you want to put your plant wall in, if you make sure that you've measured it up perfectly before, then you can just pick up as many planters as you need in store. So going through exactly how I put it together, you basically need one batten for every four planters, um, which in the instructions tells you that you need a gap of 38 centimetres. But um, from putting it up myself, I decided to do one for every two planters. Um, this just basically makes it feel a little bit more secure. So first of all, I drilled holes into either side of the battens and then I held this up against the wall exactly where I'd marked out that it needed to go and used a pencil to make a mark on the wall behind. I also made sure that I used a spirit level on top to make sure that it was exactly perfect. Then using the pencil marks that I'd made as the guide, I then drilled into the wall and I made sure that I used a masonry drill bit, um, obviously because I'm drilling into brick. So with my plant wall behind, I've used 10 rows of planters and then I've chosen to use five battens to fix it to. So once all your battens are up on the wall, you can then begin to hold the planters up against the battens and mark out exactly where you need to put your screws. So once you've marked out all the holes of where your screws need to go, you can put the screws in and then begin to hang your planters and you're good to go. Um, so probably the best part of putting the wall together is actually picking out the plants that you need. So I'm gonna go through some of the ones that I've picked out and show you what they are. One of the first ones that I've picked out, just because I love the leaves of this, was Monstera Deliciosa Tureri. And the next one that I picked out, which is some kind of fern, um, the name is Romara Varigata. Um, so when I'm picking plants, I'm trying to make sure that I'm picking a selection just so that I'm getting a bit of different height and um, giving different texture to the wall. So another one that I've picked up is another type of fern. Um, this one is Flabodium, I think that's how you say it. I went for this one just because this has a little bit more of a kind of dusty green, bluey tinge to the leaf. So I think it's quite nice to get a different lot of colours in the wall. One of the next ones that I picked up um, was Peperomia cap lilian and then I went for this one just because it has quite different leaves to the ferns and then it's also got these little bits that come out on top which just add some more 
difference in colour. So when you're picking out your plants, I think it's important that you make sure that you're picking plants which have a variety of texture, colour and shape. When you've got all of your plants and it comes to deciding where to put them in your wall, um, I would go for the bigger, bushier plants towards the edges of the wall. Um, you just got to remember that when you're putting your plants in, you're wanting to try and cover up as much of the pots behind as you can. So by choosing to put some of the lighter colour plants in the middle of the plant wall, you'll basically just be breaking up the expanse of green. Although it's great to get a variety of plants, I would suggest that you buy more than one of one type of plant. Um, say two or three and try to group them together so that when you're looking at your wall you'll be able to see patches of different types of plants. A fern which really spreads out quite a lot is perfect for this. So at the moment I've just got individual plants placed in the planters still in their pots. Um, I'm just going to keep them like this until I've actually decided the perfect layout of how I want my plants to be. Um, once I've done this I'll install the filters and then permanently pop the plants into the planters. Once I've added in all the filter clips to the plant wall and permanently planted everything um, I'll then probably only need to water the plant wall once or twice a week so I'll actually only need to water the very top row of the plant wall and this will filter through and water the whole system. The leaves can get pretty dusty so a top tip is to use a dry paintbrush and brush over the leaves every now and again to keep your plant wall looking its best. So that's the plant wall, let me know what you think, would you have one in your own home, comment below, give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. All of the product that I've used today is going to be linked in the description below.